Well, hello there, it's Donna from Indigenous Spirit Jewelry. And so at long last, I am ready to do the tutorial on flat back beaded embroidery. And so today I'm gonna to be doing a very basic video, very basic uh, flat um, embroidery, essentially around a cab or cabochon. Um, so this is kind of how the project starts. This is how the project ends. Um, and so just to kind of give you some, some of my, well, all of my best tips and tricks really. So hopefully that this process is as easy for you as possible. And so the first thing that we're going to start is we're going to start with a cab, uh, that is glued on to some beading felt. And so this is glued on with E6000 glue. Some people use Gorilla Glue. Uh, you can do that, I guess. Uh, the benefit is that you don't have to wait for the E6000 glue to dry. Some people find that the Gorilla Glue doesn't smell as bad. I actually think that it smells just as bad, but that's me. So this is your E6000 glue. And uh, all of this, uh, the supplies that you're gonna need for this is actually, you can find it in my, um, my felt embroidery beading supplies tutorial. And so for this purposes, this cap has been glued down uh, and we're, we're all ready to, to rock and roll with this. It's nice and dry and, and so we're, we're good to go. So the first thing that I'm gonna recommend is uh, something that I haven't really heard too many places, but this is a game changer for me. I, sorry about that, I like to cut the corners off of my uh, felt. And this just helps me because I get really annoyed when the thread gets caught on the corners and I find that if you have a round surface that the thread actually gets caught less. So this is something that just kind of helps uh, me with my sanity when I'm, when I'm doing these projects. So try it out and let me know what you think. So I'm actually using John Bead Good Thread for this project. And this is in black. Now the reason why I'm using black is because it's gonna be easier for you to see on the white surface. Of course, if you were actually doing a project, you would use white on white or black on black, okay? So I'm just gonna cut a little bit from my, from my project here. And what I like to do, the first thing that I wanna show you is really how to uh, thread your needle because it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt and something that you have to, to learn. Uh, it's really a technique that, that you're gonna have to get used to. So the first tip I wanna give you is that I actually cut my thread at an angle. And so this is just gonna help with the threading. The second tip that I'm actually going to give you is that when you thread this needle, it's not like a normal, a normal way that you thread a needle where you kind of hold it and you're trying to, to put it through uh, the needle. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to hold the thread through your index and thumb fingers. You're going to make sure that the hole is in the right positioning uh, and then you're actually going to put the needle down over the thread. And so I will apologize because because the way that I have this um, set up so that I can film properly is that my um, magnifying lamp is set up so you guys can see it. So my eyesight's not so great these days. I finally got it through, thank goodness. Just know that it does get easier over time, but you are always going to have frustrations with threading your needle because sometimes it's just not gonna go your way. And that's just, just the way that things are. And so then I'm gonna kind of pull my thread through. I like to leave quite a bit of a tail on my thread and I'll tell you why. So you wanna leave a tail, but you also wanna have enough thread so that you can of course do, do your embroidery, okay? The reason why I like to have it doubled over quite a bit is because the longer it is, the further you have to pull back and it can get really hard on your shoulder over time. So if you beat as much as I do um, over time, these repetitive movements, it's just something that you wanna be cognizant of, um, just to kind of take care of your body, okay? So that's something that's really important. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to tie a knot in the end. We want a double knot. So how you do this is up to you. Um, you can just do the regular double knot um, how you normally would, but I actually like to hold the thread between my thumb and index finger 
wrap it around and then roll it and then pull it through. Now, sometimes it works perfectly, sometimes it kind of comes out, but you always want to pull on the tail to make sure that it's nice and secure. And this one is nice and secure. See, I don't even need to do it like two times because it just magically bundled up for me. And sometimes, sometimes the ancestors are with you and you just kind of feel the vibe and everything's working out for you. Other times, not so much. And that's really about your beading journey as well. So now we have our doubled up thread. We have our knot at the end, we have our project with the circle, and we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing that I like to do is, if you have a hole in your cabochon, um, I like to kind of do a double securing of the, the cab uh, if I have hole a hole or holes in my cabochon. So I'm going to come up close to that hole, and I'm just going to pull my thread through. It doesn't really matter where, okay, because my goal right now is is just tacking down my thread. So most people start here, but I actually like to kind of go down just one more time close to where I came up because I want to secure my knot, okay? And so uh, with the, the knot in the back, just in case it came out or something like that, this just gives me an extra layer of protection, okay? Now what I want to do is I pull my thread, or sorry, my needle through, and this just kind of gives me an idea of where the placement of my needle is. And then I'm always kind of guiding on the back with my fingers. So this kind of helps me know where to come up, where to go down, because I'm guiding on the back, okay? That comes with time and with practice. Um, if, you're pull, if you have your hand away and you're trying to like figure out how to come up through, it's just way more difficult, like things are moving around. But if I secure my needle and then I just move it around a little bit, like that, I can get a better sense of, of where it is, okay? So now what I wanna do is I wanna come up through that hole. I hit it first shot, you may or may not. Um, it's sometimes you luck in, sometimes you don't. I'm grabbing a size 13 seed bead and I'm just gonna go back down through. So essentially, it's just going to give me a little reinforcement on top and it kind of looks nice too, right? So I can go for the contrast. I can do black on, you know, white or, or this mother of shell pearl color, or I could do a mother of shell pearl color for my seed bead as well. And that way it's hidden. It really depends on the, the look that, that you're going for, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I actually like to tack that down again, because if anything ever happened to this, I don't want my customers to have any problems. So I pull up through the bottom again, and then I'm gonna tack down. So now it's just like an extra layer of reinforcement. So now I'm all ready to go with my first row of seed beads. So my first row essentially is gonna lay flat against my cap, okay? So in this instance, I'm using size 10 seed beads and it's just easier for you guys to see. Play around, sometimes you use size 10, sometimes you'll use 11, sometimes you'll use 13s. Use different sizes, but regardless of the size that you use, I always start with about five or six seed beads to start and this gives me my foundation upon which I'm gonna work with on this row. So like a house, the foundation is one of the most important things, okay? So once I have the seed beads on there, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to kind of go around and, and start my work. So before I do that, what I want to do is I actually want to come up about one beads width in between the cab and the needle. Okay, so that's going to be one beads width of see the seed bead that I'm going to be laying down. Okay, so I pick up those seed beads five or six. And then I just pull them down and I like to pull the string up so that those seed beads fall all the way down. And then I just pull it up against the cap like that. So it's, I mean, fairly taut, not too, too much. And you can see I have a little bit of space right here. So I just wanna scoot those beads back just a little bit, but not so far that they're buckling in, in the front. Uh, you'd want them to lay flat all the way around. Now what I'm going to do is I need to tack these down so that I can start to, to reinforce them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come again 
about one seed beads like width of one side away from the center piece and not up against the last bead. I need to come out just a little bit. And the reason why is because as I start to tack down, it's going to need more thread. If I come too close to this bead, they're going to buckle and bunch. Okay. So then I just pull down gently and not pulling or, or really kind of tugging on it, just a nice gentle um, tension on your thread. I like to put the thread in between my middle finger and my ring finger on the backs because it just kind of like holds it in place a little bit. And then when I come up, I want to come up in between the, the second and the third seed bead. And you can see in the back, I'm actually coming up in between my middle finger and my ring finger as well. Okay. And it's just holding everything in place and, and things are just going to be nice and secure. So I pull it up, I'm not pulling too hard. And then I'm gonna tack down on the inside exactly in between the second and third seed bead as well. And then I pull down. The key is not to pull tightly here, nice and gentle, nice and loose. And so I'm gonna do that with the next one as well. Nice and gentle, nice and loose, up on the outside, down on the inside. Some people ask, can I come up on the inside and go down on the outside? You certainly can. It all depends on your preference. The last one, or I would say essentially that the first and second beads, I always like to reinforce these extra just because when we come around and we do the last row, the last row of beads on this side, it's nice to have that extra reinforced area. So now what I need to do is I need to get back to here so that I can put on more beads. So how do I do that? I'm actually gonna go up in front of this first bead in the middle and I'm going to come up and then go all the way through all of these beads. Now I can't do it all at once because my needle doesn't turn that way. So I just come down through what naturally is going to work and then I come down through the rest. So this gives an extra little layer of protection and it also gives some nice uniformity to your beads as well, okay? So here we are. And now what do we do? We repeat the process. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy. You can put on as many seed beads at a time as, as you like. If you're newer to beading, I would recommend doing less just until you get used to the process. So maybe I'll put on like half more again, pull it up and then around, use your needle, not your fingers, use your needle. Okay, it's just you have more control with your needle. Push them back. Again, you're coming out and just up from your project. And then we are tacking down again. Every second set of beads. It's really important that you come right in front in the middle because if you go too far up or too far down then your beads are going to buckle and then that's not going to be good because anytime that you have buckling beads it just doesn't look as nice and then when you go to do your next row of beads you're building upon kind of like a, a shaky foundation I guess like a like a foundation that's not uh, even and so then it's going to make other things not even as well okay so if you find that you've you've you have a, a some beads that are buckling take it out and start it again because i guarantee you it's just going to get worse now when i come back i like to go back over the beads that i have laid down before just back a little bit doesn't matter back one back two you don't need to count just as long as you know you're going back and then i need to do what i did the first time but i don't need to go back to the very start i just go back to one or two beads at the end of the first time that I tack down, you come up the middle and then you just go back down through. And so essentially, you're just ensuring that everything's secure, everything is uniform, everything is nice and neat. And remember, gentle is what you want here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you how to finish off and so I'm thinking probably if this was you doing this, you know, I wouldn't probably finish off from here just because 
uh, you really want to build up your skill level before you start putting on too many rows of beads. And so here we go. I'm just kind of measuring. I'm like, oh, I mean, is this enough or is this too much? Do I need more? So see here, I can fit probably one more bead, probably looking for a skinny one. These are, um, these are check seed beads. So some of them are thinner, some of them are thicker. Really good to start with the check seed beads just because they're more forgiving that way. They're not as uniform in size. So I'm gonna go through the first or the second bead. You can go through one, you can go through two, you can go through three, it really doesn't matter. Pull tight like that, just nice and gentle. And then I'm gonna go down in the middle of those beads. So you don't wanna go too far out or too far in because your beads will follow your thread and you're looking for them to be nice and uniform, right? There you go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my fingers as a guide in the back. I'm gonna come back up through the second last and the last bead, and then I would tack down. And then you just kind of do that every second bead, just like before. And then you run it back through all of the beads. And then you would, let's just say we're at the end of the beads, you would come up through after you've kind of doubled back right over and then you would run down through make sure you go through all of them and then you're kind of back to the start now what you're going to do is you have to add another row of beads so you're going to go down through the middle so that you can finish this off and now what you're going to do is you need to come up beside about a beads width just like you did before, but instead of using the centerpiece for your reference, you're now using the first row of beads for your reference. A little bit different when you're adding the second row because the first time you had a really nice flat strong base or foundation, now you have a foundation of the, the first row of beads, but it's not as, um, it's not as smooth as the cab was, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we just need to think about having a very nice light hand, okay? So like I said before, always five or six beads to start, not too many. Pull them down through. Pull it so it's just there, all the beads have fallen down and then just scoop them around. Using your tip of your needle, you push them back. See how they pop up? just requires a little bit less tension on your thread. You still need tension, just a little bit less tension than before. Again, we're gonna come out a little bit from the inside row of beads, and then down a little bit from the last bead in this row, and then we're gonna tack down. And again, up through every second bead. So pretty straightforward, and this is kind of how you do just a very, very basic flat stitch embroidery, okay? And then you would go around the second time, and uh, and then that's basically kind of how you, how you have things looking, okay? So you can use different sizes. You can use size 10, size 11s uh, of seed beads. You can use 13s. You can use 15s, just knowing that the smaller they are, the the more work you're gonna you're gonna have to do. I do find that using matte seed beads is a you probably need a higher skill level before you should start using matte seed beads. They're aesthetically when you're looking at them, they're they're less forgiving. And then the last thing I want to show you is let's just say that we had completed this whole uh, row here, and we wanted to add on some um, some chain. So I have a really nice uh, chain here, just like a pearl chain, it's really beautiful. I, it's one of my favorites. So what you're gonna do when you're adding on the chain is you're actually gonna come up really close to your project this time. So you're not leaving a beads width or anything like that. And then this is how you start, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add on, put your chain, I like to cut my chain first, so I'll kind of measure approximately how much I need and then I cut it because I don't want it dangling and catching and falling all over the place. So you're gonna line up where the first and the second link intersect with where your, your thread is. And then I just like to grab the, the first link and then I pull it in, not too tight. Everything's with a gentle hand. And then what I do is I take my needle and I scoot in the chain because you want it to be 
taut. You want it to be a little bit tighter, but not too tight, about the width of the chain up against your project. And then you pull through and just know that this is not secure. You actually need to do it a couple times and get a couple of those links in before it's nice and secure. Always gentle hand. You would not be using the same color thread. You'd be using a lighter thread so you can't see it. And I always come up on the inside and then go down on the outside. And the reason is, is because after you're done this, I usually use chain up against the outside of my project because it gives it a nice finished look. For instance, like this one. See the chain at the edge? And then I cut it. So if you come out too far and then you cut it, you're gonna cut the thread. So you wanna make sure that you're not gonna do that. Best way to do that is to come up on the inside and then to go down on the outside, okay? Once you are a more experienced beater, then, or if you wanna practice it, you can come up on the outside, but see, you have to make sure that you're very close and then you can go down on the inside because I'll tell you what, it is easier to come up on the outside and go down on the inside um, because every single time you come up on the inside, you're kind of guessing and um, until you get used to your needle placement, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, okay? So those are the flat stitch basics. Um, and in one of my other videos, I'm gonna be talking all about edging, you know, about, you know, cutting around the outside of the project and then gluing the backing on, how you do the edging, how you put posts on, how you do dangling earrings with wire guards, all that other stuff. But in the meantime, just get the basics down. I'm going to be putting some resources like always down in the comments section. And if you have any resources or if you have any links that you wanna share, then certainly that that would be really, really wonderful. The other thing that I will mention, not everybody has different color felt backing. So one thing that you actually can do is let's just say that I'm gonna be putting like a, um, a blue backing on, on this. So this is not the same color blue, but let's just say that I'm gonna be putting a blue backing on this. You always wanna match your thread to your project. So let's just say if I use the blue thread on this and I'm, I'm edging it, you're gonna see the blue thread kind of coming through on, on the felt. So for instance, if I had a white backing on here and if, if um, this was black and if I used white thread, you'd see the white thread through here, right? What you actually can do, fun fact, is that you actually can color the outside of your edging um, or any time if you want to hide hide anything in, in terms of color, you can use a black Sharpie and um, and then you can actually use it that way so that when you use the blue, the blue on the blue is not going to show as much as the blue on the white would, right? And of course, I have all sorts of different color Sharpies. For this case, I probably would have used something more like this. Do you see what I mean? Um, and that way you can kind of get away with that. But when I do my advanced video, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but this does not run and it's been used by beading professionals for quite some time. And so it's a, it's a really nice tip and trick that I wanted to let you guys know about. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this was a little bit of a longer video, but I hope that some of these tips and some of these tricks help you. If you have any questions, if you have any resources, if you have any comments, leave them in the section below. You can also reach out to me on face, my Facebook business page or Instagram at Indigenous Spirit Jewelry. Thank you so much and happy beating.